morning vlog. It is Monday. You're about to watch a very, very busy week unfold. I'm heading down to Celtic Manor now to a meeting with Goldwell. There's about 30 um, business owners, kind of, well, of their top of their top accounts, meeting for a kind of networking slash like business strategy discussion, which will be fun. Um, and then I'm coming back here. I've got a big pitch in the afternoon, and then I'm going to be heading off to get some more contracts signed. Tomorrow we're going to Coventry, and I'm then going to be pitching again in front of lots and lots of big people, which is going to be sick. Then I'm heading down to Devon for what happened there. Then I'm going to Devon um, for a few days off. I'm going to be doing a lot of training, so I'll take you guys with me for some reflection and some hanging out. So, off to the Celtic Manor we go. So we are at the Celtic Manor, which is a beautiful five-star hotel in Newport. And for those of you who don't know, my mentor Terry Matthews, the person I lived with in Canada for a month when I was 19, the first start of my career, actually owns this hotel. And he was born here, so he was born here. It was an old hospital, and they turned it into a um, like golf course. They held the Ryder Cup here. You know, luxury, luxury stuff. Beautiful, absolute weapon of a business as well. It's an absolute amazing business model. He turns like every single thing you can think of is here from spas, hair salons, shops, golf courses, everything. It's crazy. It's amazing. Epic. If you do get a chance to come, definitely do. Beautiful. He's a genius, really. He brought the idea of. American size, well not the idea, but they brought American size conferencing to the UK, so it's very Vegas-esque and um, a yeah, big conference centre, America, Canada-esque. Proper old school look and uh, called the old school, it's so, it's so many. Having been to a few conferences in America now, it's so young, it's hilarious. But he's just managed to win the contract actually to Terry to, to build the ICC Wales, which is the International Conference Centre. Dench. It's given a bit of destination. It's cool. Did you ever worry that, you know, as you started your company at 18, uh -huh. you know, what people thought of you? What was the effect of being a young person in business? Did you get shunned? Did you get pushed out of deals? Mm. Uh, how did that affect you being so young? Um, I think the answer is yes. I always worried. I always still worry. Um, I'm a worrier. So I think that generally, I think that people say they don't worry about their, what people are thinking about them, what people are doing, what people are talking about. I think that's probably bullshit. Um, I've never in, a, never in my life had a situation where I have been not got a deal because of my age, right? So there's kind of two different parts of that question. Number one, yes, I worried and I still worry about you know, how fast I'm going, how successful I am. I think that's common in any kind of high achieving person. I think that if you don't, then you're not pushing yourself fast enough. Um, or you should be worrying because that's kind of keeps you, keeps the fire under your ass. But when it comes to deal, no, I think that anyone who says that is probably not presenting themselves in the way they should. Um, don't forget, age is, in, in business, age really is just a number. In reality, it's about the experience and it's about the money. And it's about who you know. If you know people, then your people will do deals with you. If you've got money, then you can do whatever the fuck you want. And if you've got knowledge and experience, then that shows and that will bypass kind of any of the kind of major problems that you have. So really having, like obviously we can't, you know, if you don't know people, then you can't affect that. If you don't have any money, you can't affect that. But your experience and knowledge, you can go and gain as, as much experience as you possibly can. I could happily say that I've done, like for example in property, over the last five years, the unbelievable stories I could tell you about property and the experience of having to, for example, you know, doing a deal where we bought a property but then didn't, we, we took control of a property without any money down, um, basically owned that property from an equitable um, title standpoint, had power of attorney, rented it out and made margin on the rent. So we, we rented the property, leased the property from someone, had an option on it and then rented it out. I could then tell you that from there, you know, we 
had a bad tenant in there who started shooting up heroin and was spraying blood all over the walls and I had to pay him off to get him out. And he had a knife on him. And then we then put more people on the property that ended up being nurses and they're amazing. And then I've had tenants that didn't, didn't pay and then tenants that did pay, tenants that paid us too much. Like just by going out there and doing very small stuff over the first few years will gain you experience, which I, it is one of the three major assets when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Who you know, money and your experience. This is the only experience that really is the only one you can affect. So I'd say the kind of only word of advice for that is go and be the little bitch for the next 10, 5, 10 years. Go and do whatever you can, do as much as you can and do everything, even if it feels like they should be, you know, they should be paying you <laughs> to, to, to do this work. Um, you know, they, they should, you know, if it's worth zero pounds to your time, you should be doing it um, because that will kind of cement your mindset and make you better, make you bypass any age problems or anything like that. Coaching. Where are you going? We've got coaching, Jacob. Right now? Yes. Perfect. Two minutes. Hurry up. He's always so late. We're already 15 minutes late for our coaching session. And we have to be out by 5 o'clock because we're taking the whole team to Soho tonight for Pen Yen, Japanese food, as a reward for last month because everyone smashed their targets. Um, so we're going out there to have some fun. Hopefully, we'll be doing the same thing next month um, but yeah guys it's, it's been a, it's been a nuts few weeks I know that we haven't um, kind of taken you very kind of many places because we've been here so much we've been um, just just grinding it out it's been one of those times where we've, we've we've kind of really really got a fantastic client base right now and a fantastic kind of progression um, kind of plan across all the across all the businesses and um, just head down, you know, head down and get it done. So, better go get some coaching done. See if he's ready for us. Do you remember being sat in this office? I can't believe it. Feels like a long time ago. Because it was. It's because it was. This is our this is our old office, right? How many people do we have in here? Ten. Yeah, I think so. Ten At people in here. Which is insane, actually, isn't it? It's very yeah, small. We celebrated Avalanche's third birthday this year. For our second, you got a Porsche, which is quite nice. Yeah. Well, ne what are we doing next year? Well, next year's Vegas. We're going to Vegas. If we are target. When? When? Yeah, it's all our language. Out. And I'm going to go to Bellagio. Jacob's going to sleep outside, and I'm going to sweet. You were at Trump Tower last time, weren't you? No, I was in the Bellagio. More reports and building that out. Um, but I do also think there was a massive vanity element to being able to write that report and saying, holy fuck, look how well we're doing. Mm. Yeah, I, what I'm thinking is that, that that whole board meeting process gave you belief, A, in the businesses, but B, and most importantly, in you. Whereas the opposite disc profile doesn't need that because he's got more belief than... He needs on some levels, right? <laughs> we are we are late as usual, so we're going to have a free shout at that. Not angry with us for being late. Yeah. Oh, you prepared us to leave. I thought I was going to come into Lucy kicking and screaming. Sorry, we're late. It is a nice car, though, so I have to give you that one. What's your favourite piece? Of, what's your favourite thing about it? What's your favourite thing about the car? My favourite thing is the 19-inch black alloy. I don't even know how many inches they are. I don't know. I'm joking. Lots of inches. Yeah. It's very clean. Yeah, it's clean. Just now. No, on the weekend. Twenty-five quid. Twenty-five quid. Yeah. Jesus. Not a truck. Well, pretty much. But they do a good job, don't they? They do.
stand on the right side in approximately 200 yards is David Beckham's house. George, have a look and see if you can see him. George, here he is, David Beckham's house. There we go, is he in? I think so. You can just see him over that massive wall. <laughs> I'm going to have to say bye to you now, vlog, because we can't take you in there. I'm going to film, so I'm going to go enjoy our dinner. Enjoy our pen, yet. And then we'll catch you in a bit. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. We're just off to the pool to do a mad swim. And then back to the house to do a mad bike. And then to the office for about half ten. Over this next few weeks, my, um kind of day is going to be starting work-wise at about sort of 10, half 10-ish, just because with all the training I've got to do and all of the stuff that I need to do for this Ironman, it's, um, your, um, your it makes it very difficult to do, kind of, kind of do that at night, because by the time the day's over, the work day's over, I am completely and utterly, like, smashed to bits, fatigued mentally, um, and mental fatigue doesn't, whilst your body's not tired, it doesn't really do very much for your um, training quality. So we're trying out this morning routine when it's nice and early. And we're trying to double before work, so we'll see how that goes too. We're back after that swim. I'm red, I'm hot. 3.2K in just over an hour, which is probably one of my records. Um, now time for Zwift before we get on, on with our 10 hour work day. Love it. And there we have it. Two hours working out done before work. Now I've got a 10.30 till 6.30 slash 7 day. It's going to be power. I've started to do a lot more um, mindfulness in the last week after kind of quite a tough few months in terms of getting my head in the right place because obviously doing all this training, doing all these businesses, everything's speeding up and you know there's just a lot of responsibility so um, every day this last week I've spent you know sort of 10-15 minutes meditating um, you know really reflecting kind of a bit like what I used to do um, when I first started all this crazy entrepreneur stuff um, which was actually spend time you know really not thinking about anything else but me and my mind and myself um, and I stopped doing it because I thought oh well you know that's just a load of you know people who aren't taking action do that um, and I got into this mindset was you know I didn't I don't need to do that I don't need to be the person that sits there and says I am you know the best CEO in the world or I am you know a billionaire those kind of things and to be honest with you I missed that and I and I when I and I've started doing it again to be honest with you so I'll tell you how it goes but I already feel much kind of better in my space and in my mind and you know Coming out in here and you know sitting in here in, in the car, for example, looking at that and saying, you know, I am doing well, I am pushing forward, I am doing great, and um, making sure you got your affirmations in check. So do that this week. Why not spend a little time, come up with some affirmations, talk to yourself, feel a little bit weird. There's no one judging you but you. Oh, I'm tired this afternoon. I'm not sure this whole thing was a good idea working out two hours. Oh, I'm tired of flagging now, it's called three. I'm here for another four hours, so just thought I'd show you me having a five minute break because um, I've decided to start doing this thing where I basically like. I decide to do a lot of things, by the way, so those of you who see lots of me implementing different ideas and trying things because I'm just trying to figure out how to be the most productive and how to be the most efficient um, some things work, some things don't most things don't so here's another one I am basically putting my phone on airplane mode for like an hour at a time or 50 minutes roughly because that's kind of apparently the most optimum work time that you can really focus for um, and then taking no distractions so that that's 50 minutes, take a break chill. I've realised I'm getting more done in 50 minutes than I would do usually in about an hour and a half. And that's because the theory is it takes you about 11 minutes to gain concentration and then about 5 seconds to lose it. So if you're consistently getting distracted by your phone, which is a scary thing, the amount of pick up times, how many times you pick this thing up during the day, um, check it, you can see if you've got an iPhone, you can see how many times you pick it up. Um, 
here is you get what you you less distracted you do get kind of you get lose concentration so it's working although I am knackered so we'll see how the efficiency keeps up until seven o'clock tonight. I have to come to work. You see, this morning I've worked out <coughs> twice for two hours. Yeah. And I'm in work and I'm working until like half six. So the answer is yeah. We've got time. Come to work and just get done. Um. I don't think tired is something that is like. Is it? It's like something you can like diagnose. Or is it just... I'm diagnosing it right now. I am nah. Do you want to know how many hours of sleep Lucy has at night? How many hours? 10 to 12. 10 to 12. I think I have 10 to 12 hours of sleep over two nights. That's insane. How... Get your sleep in. It's good for you. Aids yeah. weight loss. I think I sleep like six and a half hours a night. I'm the final one here. I've made it through that long day. I'm going to do the same thing again tomorrow with working out twice in the morning because it actually felt alright. I felt quite productive. I mean, I probably look knackered, but, you know, your body's got to get used to changes. Um, but yeah, guys, that is, comes to the end of this vlog. It's been a heavy-duty one. Uh, next week, you'll be seeing our launch party in Serena Grant Swindon, and I'll give you some update on that as well, um, on the salon business and all of that. So look out for that next vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Do comment, and if you've got anything questions-wise you want to get involved in the conversation, do get in touch and comment on below. And of course, if you do not subscribe to us, make sure you do that as well, because um, we really like to keep making more and more videos for you, and have a big audience. Thanks a lot.